Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We would ask that you take your seats at this time, being mindful of the six-foot distance, and masks are required through the entire service, except when you receive communion. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand. Amen. The, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion with the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Caroline died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. On the day of her baptism in 1957, Caroline put on Christ. On the day of Christ's return, may she be clothed with glory. And let us pray. God of our ancestors in the faith, by the covenant made on Mount Sinai, you taught your people to strengthen the bonds of family through faith and through honor and through love. Today, look kindly upon Caroline. She was a wife and a mother. She sought to bind her family close to you. Bring her today to our heavenly home where the saints dwell in blessedness and in peace. And we pray this the only way we can, through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Be seated for the word of God. A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and makes cloth with skillful hands. She rises while it is still night and distributes food to her household. She is girt about with strength, and sturdy are her arms. She enjoys the success of her dealings. At night, her lamp is undimmed. She reaches out her hand to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. 
She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs at the days to come. She opens her mouth in wisdom, and on her tongue is kindly counsel. Her children rise up and praise her. Her husband, too, extols her. Many are the women of proven worth, but you have excelled them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward of her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and place us with you in his presence. Everything indeed is for you so that the grace bestowed in abundance on more and more people may cause the thanksgiving to overflow for the glory of God. Therefore, we are not discouraged. Rather, although our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not to what is seen, 
but to what is unseen. For what is seen is transitory, but what is unseen is eternal. For we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Mary came to see where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled, and he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and the stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of this crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he said this, he cried out, when he said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, bound hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to the crowd, untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what had been done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. Get comfortable. We're talking about Caroline Harvath today. Jesus, Martha, and Mary, and the crowd. They're all weeping. But then the story, as you heard, takes a dramatic turn. Jesus steps forth prayed loudly for his friend Lazarus, calls him by name to come out, 
and Lazarus stumbles out of the tomb wrapped in linen strips. And Jesus says quietly to the others, untie him and set him free. The crowd is awestruck. The early church loved this story. They told it over and over again. Now they knew that the love of a friend was stronger than death. And the life of a friend was greater than the tomb. The depth and freedom of Jesus' love was liberating. Jesus could make all things new again. They loved this story. Jesus had authority over death, an authority that was rooted in his friendship love for his really best friend, Lazarus. We continue to believe this. We continue to believe that the same Jesus who groaned loudly over Lazarus groans loudly over his friend Caroline. He loved her no less than Lazarus. He says to his angels and saints today, untie her, set her free. Take away the mortality. Take away the doctors. Take away the pills. Take away the disabilities. Take away all those cancers. Take away all fears and anxieties and uncertainties. Take away the imprisonment of her body. Take away any pain, immobility. Take away losses. Take it all away, untie her, set her free. And today we celebrate Caroline's freedom. And so really today, there's an undercurrent of spiritual joy that runs parallel to our mourning for her. This gospel's been reenacted. We put flowers before the altar, harbingers of spring and new life. We light the Easter candle here in the sanctuary, a sign of the risen Christ, a Christ who entered the darkness of the tomb, who cried out for everyone all to hear, untie her, set her free. Still, for us who enter into this story of the gospel, even as we try to believe that Jesus has in fact untied Caroline from death, we're left with emptiness. We're still the ones trying to figure it out. She's too young to die. Cancer is not a good thing. So if it would help, let me present a wonderful image of death and resurrection for you. It's one of my favorite stories. I've, I've used it before. I want you to sit back and maybe close your eyes. Don't fall asleep. I want to tell you this story. Imagine this. Close your eyes and imagine this. Picture yourself standing on the dock watching a great sailing ship lying silently and quietly at the dock for the wind to fill its sails and set it into great motion. Finally, a strong wind comes up. It springs into action. The, sh the captain shouts the orders. The sailor hoists the great white sails. The wind catches it with a great puff. And that ship, that huge ship, slowly moves away from the dock like a sea serpent over the waters. Beautiful. But by and by, the ship becomes smaller and smaller for us watching on the dock, and it becomes a little speck where the sky and the sea meet at the horizon. And someone next to us on the dock shies out the traditional cry, there she goes. And we all wave goodbye, and we go home. But the question is, where goes where? That ship, which was a little dot on the horizon, is still just as big and as mighty, just as laden with cargo and with people as it was when it was standing next to us on the dock. The difference is in us. The difference is it's merely receded from our view and disappeared. That's all. But somewhere as it moves on that foreign shore, that dot, that speck, that tiny ship, invisible now to us, becomes larger and larger to the people on the other shore. And they see her coming towards her. And they cry the traditional cry, here she comes. Here she comes. We've been waiting. Right now we're people on the dock watching Caroline go. 
She is moved from the horizon of death, and we remark with such great sadness, there she goes. But I remind you of the change is only in us. Caroline, our wife, our mom, our mother-in-law, our great friend is still larger than life. Oh, you know she's larger than life. In fact, she's so large in life that Jesus stands on that other shore with Caroline's parents, Robert and Jeannie, and all those gone before her in death who have been untied. And they shout, here she comes. And you know what? Caroline stumbles forth on that other shore with her renewed body, fully recovered now, no more cancer, younger than ever, that natural blonde. <laughs> and Jesus steps out to meet her. And Jesus turns to the crowd as he says once more again, as he said thousands of times, millions of times, untie her and set her free. And then St. Peter, the great gatekeeper, meets Caroline and says, Oh, good Lord, she makes great meatloaf and, and shepherd's pie. We need that up here. She's over there, Lord, drinking red wine and talking to Andy Griffith. She thinks she's in Mayberry. She's listening to the music of Louis Prima. She's tap dancing. And she's singing somewhere over the rainbow. And you know what? She's over there. Look, she's wearing a mink coat. Wow, we haven't seen one of those in years up here. Please let her in, Lord. She's from Kirkwood. Kirkwood, Missouri, in a parish named St. Jared, if you're old and from St. Peter a long time. Or St. Gerard, if you're young and not from Kirkwood a long time. And Jesus says to her, untie her and set her free. So we gather at St. Jared's. I'm an old Concordian. To celebrate the life of Caroline Landis Harvath, 62 years old, married to Mark for 38 years, the mother of Lauren and Joe, a mother-in-law and aunt, sister of Cynthia, Lina Lamb, Carolina Moon. She attended Parkway West High School and then Southeast Missouri State at Cape. After she met Mark, she became a stay-at-home mom but she did do newborn hearing tests at Mercy Hospital and babysat for children. She was the consummate mom and nurturing person, Caroline. Her hobbies include tap dancing and fishing and tap dancing. <laughs> she liked anything to do with water, pontoon boats, cruises, swimming at the lakes at Innsbruck or the pool at Country Surf. And did I say she liked tap dancing? She even made it to the Senior Olympics, tap dancing. She tap, tap, taped her way to a gold medal. Pretty good. The lady could cook stuffed green peppers. I mentioned the meatloaf and shepherd's pie. Every night when her family was younger, she put a meal on the table. They made eight meals together. The kids loved her cooking, except for some of the meals they didn't like when they hid the food behind the TV, <laughs> which wasn't discovered until the dog discovered it. <laughs> she wasn't always a good cook. We remember that first Thanksgiving after her marriage to Mark. She forgot to thaw the turkey, so she threw the turkey into the dryer, <laughs> which most people normally do, of course. And she broke the dryer and ruined the turkey. And Mark never let her forget Thanksgiving. When Caroline did go out to eat, she liked Rich and Charlie's for their salad and roast beef au jus, or Tucker's for steaks, or any place that had a happy hour. <laughs> she collected any, uh, lots of things, but anything that had to do with Andy Griffith or the Wizard of Oz. I don't think, oh uh, no, I know, in my 48 years of being a priest and preaching, I've never met someone who collected plates calendars, mugs, pictures, lunch boxes of Andy Griffith. She's the first one I've ever met like that. That's how she, unique she was. She even had a life-size cutout of Andy. And one time, Thelma Lou, Barney's girlfriend, left a personalized message on the phone for Caroline. They still don't have it erased. 
you can call the line and get Thelma Lou. <laughs> I'm not done with this. When Andy Griffith died, she was working, and she got a phone call from family that, that Andy had died. She ran to her boss and said this, there's been a death in the family, I've got to leave. <laughs> Who does that? She also loved Mr. Head, the talking horse on TV. And the music of Saint Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett, Pen Perry Como, Ella Fitzgerald, and Louis Prima, say a little prayer for me, and I want, I want to be like you from Jungle Book. She wore expensive clothes that no one wanted, like a mink coat. She wore it often. Caroline was a throwback in time. She was the f perfect 50s wife and mom. In fact, her kids often said she's a wannabe June Cleaver. I think that's true. She actually got dressed up for Mark. Every time he came home for work, she got dressed up for him to serve him dinner in the family, just like June, pearls and all. I think that's why everyone loved her so much. She was unique. They threw away the mold with her. She was so loving, and you know, she was a reminder to us of simpler times, grace-filled times of the 50s. We need that. Oh, then there's the Caroline sayings. Every conversation ended with, love ya. Are you knowing it? Are you feeling it? Right back at you. Keep saying that. Or she'd say, if you told her something, oh, I love it, I love it. Or the words in her vocabulary when you talk to her, tremendous, outstanding, peppering every phrase. Or you look like a million bucks. Or have you ever said, well, I'm going to go jump in the shower, she always said, well, don't jump too high. She was a mom. And every year on Mother's Day, she always wore the paper flower that her daughter Lauren made years ago when she was in grade school, right? Mm -hmm. And the diamond earrings from the dollar store that her son Joe got her when he was in grade school, she wore them every Mother's Day for Mass here at St. Gerard's. Every year, this year. Who does that? Her favorite colors seem to be pink. Her favorite holidays were Halloween and Christmas. Her favorite saint, the Blessed Mother. Her favorite lunch treat, you know what it was? A Depot hot dog at Home Depot. <laughs> Simple tastes. Late, you know what her, lately her favorite mass was? The nine o'clock mass at Mercy Hospital. You know why? I'll tell you. It was short. <laughs> and no collection. Her favorite drink was anything that anyone else was drinking, or red wine. A good and expensive one. At dinner, at the end of the day. And then there were Caroline traditions. Unusual, so was she, but Caroline, totally. Like, when the kids were small, Easter Sunday morning, the kids would wake up to a total mess on the kitchen floor. I mean, a mess, complete with eggs smashed on the floor and, and crushed carrots on the floor because the Easter Bunny would always raid their, white, their, uh, their, their, their refrigerator. And so there would be mess all over the kitchen floor. Who does that? <laughs> or the kids' birthdays. They would be always awakened to the birthday song, to the tune of the Budweiser song. Here comes the crew, here comes the birthday crew. He comes with a song just made for you. Who does that? <laughs> and she insisted on being buried at St. Peter's Cemetery. I like that. I'm from St. Peter's Church. I love that place. That's where I'm going to be. Carol and I will be together. You know why she chose that cemetery? Not just because it's close. Oh, no, there are three reasons. The Kirkwood Pool's next door. She's a natural blonde. Secondly, she could finally go to the Geyer Inn without being caught. And thirdly, she could hop a train if she wanted to. We all know that Caroline suffered from various forms of cancer since she was 19 years of age. They didn't stop her. 
She got married. She had children. She lived life and she loved life. That's why we're all here. We all knew it. Despite her challenges with her health. She loved it. She enriched it. And she made us love it and enriched our lives. We are the better for it. So I asked Mark and Lauren and Joe, describe your mom and your wife in adjectives, because they're, they're such great words. They did, enthusiastic, joyous, loving, positive, humorous, determined, faithful, selfless, faith-filled, energetic. So perhaps a very simple farewell for this simple, wonderful, great, 1950s lady. And she was a lady. Goodbye is our standard expression of farewell, isn't it? But it has a religious connotation. It's an old English contraction word, which means God be with ye until we meet again. So goodbye, Caroline. We'll miss you. Goodbye, God be with ye until we meet again. And we will. So Lord, untie her and set her free. Amen. Let's stand now and offer our prayers of intercession, our prayers of the faithful. And let us pray. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ his Son from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all of his people, living and dead. For Caroline, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sister, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our sister Caroline, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for all of our deceased relatives and friends, Robert and Jeannie, Landis, Alex, Gert and Tom Horvath, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our God our shelter and God our strength, you listen to love and cry of all of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for all of our departed sisters. Gentle woman, quiet light, morning star, so strong and bright. 
gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us love. You were chosen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Caroline, we beseech your mercy, that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful, Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when the earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling place is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Kneel or be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, O Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to the glory of your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit to graciously make holy these gifts which we brought before you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these holy mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, 
and he gave it to his disciples gathered with him. He said, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the chalice to his disciples at table. He said, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven. As we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Gerard Magella and all the saints, on whose constant intercession, your presence, we rely for your unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church here on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Archbishop and Apostolic Administrator, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your very own. And listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we summon before you today at St. Gerard. And your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Caroline, whom we've called, you've called today to yourself, Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorified, glorified body. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes and we will see you, our God, as you really are. And we should be like you for all the ages and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, that you may bestow upon the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together we pray the prayer of the disciples, the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but but deliver deliver us us from from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For For the the kingdom, kingdom, the power, power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. may kneel or be seated. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof. Only say the word. My soul shall be healed.
He will raise you up on evil.
Hello everyone, my name is Bill Stabler and on behalf of the Harvath family, I'd like to say a few things and read a heartfelt note from Mark. Uh, first, the family wants to thank everyone for coming. They appreciate every kind word and prayer extended to Caroline and the family through these trying times. Also, immediately after the service, everyone is invited to the gravesite at St. Peter's and afterwards to a celebration of life to be held at the Lion Pavilion at Kirkwood Park. In Mark's words, I hope every married couple here today has the same love for their spouse as he has felt for his dear Caroline. We truly had an almost fairy tale love affair for 40 years. Even though a glitch has been presented by our passing, the love continues in, on in both of their hearts. He taught a shy, nervous, quiet guy from Shrewsbury how to live. The abundance of love in Caroline's heart towards all of us will never cease ne nor be forgotten. We could still feel her love, hear her laugh, hear her see her smile, hear her tap dancing, and remember her singing birthday songs to everyone for the rest of our lives. One of Mark's lifetime friends, Gary, while one of, on other, went on one of their first of many vacations together, decided to start teasing her about how she claimed to love everything. He didn't believe her, but after a few days, Gary gave up and admitted that she did love everything and everyone. <laughs> It was a bet that he was happy to lose. As Mark has always believed, Caroline may have been the proudest mama in the world. And after seeing how terrific Joe and Lauren have been through these difficult days, always there to do anything and ensure their mother maintained her grace and dignity, well, Mark says, well done, babe, you raised them well. Caroline dancing with Joe at his recent wedding was a beautiful sight for everyone to see. One day, after being in the hospital for two solid weeks, after re receiving a terminal diagnosis the day before, with no strength and full of pain, she still was determined to lead her boy through the mother-daughter dance. It was outstanding. Dandrika, those are big shoes to fill as the new Mrs. Harvath. <laughs> Funny, I got a feeling you're going to do great. And if you need any help, I think you might get some messages. <clears throat> Likewise, Lauren's husband and Caroline's favorite son-in-law, Josh, has meant much, I'm sorry, I'm skipping a ahead, um, has been terrific. Mark would like you to thank you for your support different friends from different groups. If you look at all the pictures, there's thousands of different people in those pictures out there, but they all were united in love for her. Lisa, Laura, Janet, Mary Kay, Anne, Michelle, Mary, Ann, Judy Davis, all her tap dancing sisters, and her dear, dear Norma and Sharon. Susan Hauser, who casually offered to pay, pray with Caroline one day. Little did Susan know that Caroline thought that was a daily promise <laughs> and held her to it. And she left a note, Susan, you're still not off the hook. She'll see you at nine o'clock Monday at St. Peter's. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to her friend and gambling buddy, Steve, Mark's brothers, Bob, his brother, Jim, whose hugs meant the absolute world to her. Beth, Connie, Greta, Kim, and Mo. And her loving sister, Sin, who has been with the family the whole way. The list goes on and on. She loved you all. And now I think Lauren would like to say a few words. Joe and I are the absolute luckiest kids in the world because we got to call Caroline Harbath our mom. Nobody loved harder or bigger than our mama. She was undoubtedly our biggest fan and made us feel like a million bucks every second of every day. 
Each day was full of so many tight hugs, lipstick-stained kisses on our cheeks, and the daily question of, why don't you come sit on my lap? <laughs> yes, up until last week she would say that. We both talked her on the phone at least three times a day, and she ended each call with, I love you so much. Are you knowing it? Are you feeling it? Right back at me? And the answers were always yes, 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 because we absolutely knew it, felt it, and loved her just as much. Our childhood was one for the books, all because of her and my pa. For our birthdays, she started the tradition that she grew to regret once we hit our 20s, a present for every year we existed. <laughs> I am absolutely expecting 34 of them this year, Pa. You all heard the Easter story, but that was an absolute highlight of our childhood as well. And on Halloween, um, she started a tradition where she would serve her famous chili in carved pumpkins, which, you know, a one, once a year is awesome, but I started telling all my friends to come over every week. So she would spend full days just carving mini pumpkins for all my friends to eat chili out of, and it was the greatest thing in the whole wide world. And Christmas, where do I even begin? While well, Santa brought most kids a few books and some toys. Joe and I got unicycles and moon shoes and a bird and bouncy stilts and just about anything we could ever dream of. Growing up with her was magical. My mom and pa had the relationship that every couple would hope and dream to have. From day one, when she ran and jumped in his UPS truck because she thought he was cute, <laughs> to the whole turkey debacle, and two more recently, when I would come home to find the two of them in the basement together, my ma tap dancing while my pa played the saxophone. Every moment they spent together was full of fun and laughter. They were each other's entire world, and we were so lucky to have grown up with them as an example of how happy parents should be together. We know how lucky we are to have been loved by her. It was the absolute best feeling in the world. Mom, we're loving you, and we all promise that when we jump in the shower, we won't jump too high. Finally, the only way Mark knows how to end this is with his beautiful wife's most famous words. Love you, call me when you get home. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Let's stand now for our final prayer. Lord God, whose son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully glance that strengthened by it today, our sister Caroline may come to the eternal table of Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our great affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope that one day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, will destroy even death itself. Let's pause for a few moments in our prayer as we remember and give thanks to God for the life of Caroline in our midst and made us better. At the very beginning of our liturgy today, we anointed Caroline's body with holy water. We recall the day of her baptism, 1957, which was a great day for her, but even a better day for, the, for all of us, the church. As I conclude our Mass today for her, I will anoint her body with incense as a symbol of our prayers rising heavenward to God our Father for her and for us.
but also a, a sign of our great reverence and respect for her. And as I do that, we'll sing the song of farewell. <laughs> Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Caroline in the sure and certain hope that together with all who died in Christ, that you will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for all the blessings you bestowed upon him in her life, and there are many blessings. They are signs of, of your goodness, of our fellowship with the saints, and your presence in our life. But Lord, turn towards us now and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant. But help us to remain here to comfort each other with the assurances of our faith, what we believe, till we all meet again in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Throughout this whole Mass, there's been a book on her casket here called Jesus is Calling. She read it every day. It's a meditation for every day. But it's a really appropriate name, Jesus Calling. Because I do believe that Caroline's life through all the challenges that she had and the joy that she experienced in it, she realized every day Jesus was calling her. But unlike many of us, she heard that call every day. And because of that, she was able to get through her challenges of her cancer with such dignity, with such, with such life, and with such holiness, because she heard every day Jesus calling. May the angels lead you into paradise, Caroline. May the martyrs come to welcome you, take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs welcome you, lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, may you have eternal rest. In peace now, let us take our sister to her place of rest. 